Hello, this is Lane Campbell uh, from Team Lunar, and I'm going to be showing off my small, non-lethal enemy mechanic uh, and level prototype that I made for the project so that no one will cry. Go into level select, and my level is here, small enemy. Alright, so we start out in just a small area to let you get acclimated to the controls. Walk through the open door into this small narrow highway, ha hallway, and I'm able to see ahead of me the small non-lethal enemy that I created for this milestone. Uh, I wanted to make the introduction area a place where you you know, you have to uh, interact with him and get caught by him so that you know how to deal with him. Uh, if I go too far forward, that door closes behind me. So I pretty much have to run into him. And when I do, he attaches to my leg and I try to move around. I can move, but it's very slow. I'm not even able to sprint or crouch. So I have to mash the space bar to break free. When I do, he falls over, and he'll be incapacitated like that for about seven seconds before he gets back up and then starts patrolling and, and coming after me again. Like so. All right, so that's clearing the practice, uh, the introduction, uh, action block rather. And here in this next room, we have two locked doors and inactive light puzzle I'm able to press the button, but nothing is going to happen because it's not active right now. So I'm going to move forward to the only open door. I see ahead of me an enemy. That is our lethal enemy. If, I, if he catches me, I will uh, lose. If I go too far forward, this door closes behind me and I'm locked in here with them. I'm able to hide from the enemy inside of the lockers. He doesn't know how to open these. And we have an active light box puzzle as indicated by the flashing red light. So I'll hold that down. I made sure to set um, this light box in this position because once we fill it up, and you'll see in a second, these lights come on, and I'm able to see further into the area. I'm going to let him catch me right now. So that's our lose condition, getting caught by the enemy. And when I hit retry, I come back to this checkpoint. You see the door is open once again. That light puzzle has not been completed, so I still have to do it. Come through. It's going to close once more for me. Oh, he's right there. I'm going to wait and see what he does. Oh, here comes the small guy. I'm not too scared of him, so I'll just let him catch me and mash the button. See him off over there. Oh, he's coming this way. Better hide. Okay, let's see. Okay, they've gone far enough away now. And our lights come back on, just like last time. Let's see, where's it going? He's coming this way. I'm gonna hide from you. But yeah, one of the main philosophies behind, uh, this level is just uh, using the darkness to keep the player from wanting to go to certain areas, turning on lights as they complete puzzles to let them feel comfortable to move into other areas. Oh, here comes big guy. Ooh, he almost got me. The second one is, the second light puzzle here is a little bit more challenging than I wanted it to be. Okay, he's going off that way. But once we get to the next one, it's a little easier to get. But in future versions, I'll probably try to rework these enemy nav points so that 
they don't come so close to this light puzzle as often as they do right now. Just a little more challenging than I would have liked. Alright, we'll knock you out and get you out of here. Yeah, see, he comes here fairly often. somebody's coming. Oh, here he comes. Didn't even see me. Oh, I think someone's coming. Oh, it's a little guy. Little guy's not so scary. But I think big guy's coming now. Okay, they've gone away. Now we can finish this up. And this will open the door in here. Turns on the light in this room that we were previously at. And also activates the light puzzle so that we're able to keep moving forward. And that's the end of the practice action block. Now we'll move on to the master. And it continues the theme of darkness all around, and the more puzzles you complete, the brighter it becomes. Crouch to get through these little areas. I wanted this the light here to guide you through and real make the player realize that they need to crouch. Another nice touch is these light boxes actually light up the area a little bit so you can see around you while you're stuck in this position. Once again, we see lights come on, guiding the player where to go. I'm not hearing any of my enemies at the moment. Oh, it's right there. Oh, I think they ran into each other. He's going to try and chase me now. And that's actually okay. So... I actually exited the, the locker there to um, test another checkpoint out. That wasn't him getting through the locker. So if I hit retry, I am now back here uh, past the, uh, the door, and, and the door is open once again behind me. And we see that this light puzzle is once again needing to be completed. Oh, here he comes. Oh, he's getting attracted to the light box. Until he gets a little further away. Right, that should be far enough. And our lights come back on like they should. Oh, I hear him. He's pretty close. Going off that way. Okay. 
So these lights have come on now, guiding me through this little hole. Oops, it's gonna stop right there. did see me, so I'm going to hide. Let him start going, going around the area again. He's going up that way. He's coming right for me. And just reposition these. Oop! You saw that light. The enemy is able to detect uh, the light from the light box if they're close enough to it. By the way, so that's why he keeps coming back. If I don't wait long enough. Right, here it goes. And from that angle, I'm able to see that door open up. So I know I got to make my way over there. Saw me as I tried to. Through. There is a little way for him to get in here, so I gotta be careful. But that concludes the master action block, and I walk outside to win. And that is my presentation on the small enemy mechanic. I'm gonna hand it over to my teammate Lillian now. So my name is Lillian Chuax. I am a part of Team Lunar, and this is my showcase of the mechanic I worked on for this sprint, as well as the level prototype. As you can see, this is our build in Windows with uh, the EXE file and the revision. I'm going to open this up. Alrighty, so here it is. To get to my specific level prototype, you gotta go to enemy trap. So that is what I made. I made a tar barrel that once pushed over will create a puddle of tar. The sound is loud enough that the enemy will become alerted to whenever one is tipped over. And the player and the enemy can be put into this here. Right? And they will be caught for 10 seconds. And once the 10 seconds is over, it is going to be 3 seconds of a severely diminished walking speed before it goes back to normal. I decided that this would be best for the key puzzle that we have implement implemented earlier on in the development because this uh, would hold the enemy for a certain amount of time while the player was grabbing all of the pieces needed. I put a lot of shelving units in here um, for hiding. Let me stick this over and hide real quick. And the enemy is captured. So we're going to bring this over. I'm also going to tip this one over. So that he is caught again. And again with this one. Perfect. He does see me. That is okay. And I will be doing this one as well. Thank you. There we go. This will open, and I win! So that is my showcase of my enemy trap, tar barrel, and tar puzzle puddle for this sprint. Thank you so much for watching, and next up will be Keith in his throwable glass bottle mechanic and level prototype. Thank you. 
Hi, thank you to Lillian for that introduction. My name is Keith Patty, and I'm going to be demonstrating my mechanic and level prototype for our project so that no one will cry. It's a, a glass bottle that can be picked up and thrown, and when it is, it will draw the enemy eye and, and spawn a hazard that will also do the same thing when it's stepped on by the player. Um, I designed the level in a way to make them backtrack around, back through, and kind of experiment with the consequences of their actions, which is why I didn't place any of the hazards a part of our core gameplay loop in the level itself. This was a design choice just to see what could happen with the bottle being the sole source of the hazards coming in and what would happen with the player um, dealing with that. So with that, I'm going to get into the level um, and show how it works. So when we start off, we see that this bottle flies off the shelf over here, and um, we see that the AI has come over to investigate it. Um, so hopefully this will give the player a little bit of intuition to kind of walk over here and look at the bottles, and they'll see that they can collect them where this little UI will pop up and allow us to aim and cancel the throw and actually release it and throw it, which will draw him over when he comes in. Uh, when it when it lands i should say um and i designed this light box puzzle placement to show that door in the right corner on the far right um to show that the ai is roaming around that hallway and you can see it out of the corner of their eye you do also see that big door but it can be kind of misleading to the player because there will be a locked hallway over there um so that's why on this next part here i made it so the player can't really get through there without doing uh, the mechanic. And if they do try to go into that room at the far end, they're just gonna get locked in there with the AI and not be able to get out and have to restart. Um, so I threw it over there. I'm gonna book it straight to the door over here, which we can interact with. And I'm gonna let him come back and see me so I can demonstrate the transition into the next area. So once he's there, he's gonna notice, maybe, someday. Come on. Hello? You see me? I'm gonna close that door behind me. And he's cut off for now, but that door also opened that door on the other end of the room that I mentioned on that hallway earlier. And we're gonna see that when he comes back through it, it's actually gonna close the door. So now the player is officially locked in here and forced to interact with the space. Um, we have this light box puzzle blinking over here and we see that that one is currently off. Um, so we now need to get this light box complete and avoid him, which when the, he, the player does enter this room, the nav points will switch. Um, I made it so that way he kind of patrols more on that side of the level for this, um, but not so far away that he can't see the player. So that way they can actually try to get this puzzle done and try to distract him if they need to. Um, making sure to put enough space between the nav points to get a distraction in there and get him lured over there um, for a second. And throwing the bottle does help because it occupies him for a bit of time. It keeps him investigating. Um, right, so he's seen us, or he's seen the investigation on the light box, which is another thing I did in the beginning is disable that. So that way he wouldn't be drawn to it um, for the sake of the player. Uh seeing the mechanic in action. Um, when we come through here, we have another checkpoint. Um, so once we get into here, I do want to demonstrate something about the bottle before we move on. And I'll just play the loss condition as well. We notice that when we have a bottle, um, or when we don't have a bottle, and we pick one up, we reset to the checkpoint, and we don't have it again. We can't throw it. Um, so the checkpoints do save the state of the bottle that they are stored on the player or whether the player doesn't have one and whether it can be thrown. Um, and I'll pick one up before I move to the checkpoint and lose again, just to show the uh, next part of the demonstration. So I'm gonna leave that there for now and move on to this next light box and uh, pick up a bottle real quick. I'm gonna get this going. He's investigating. Gonna let him go away for a second, see where he goes, and then determine if I need to distract him. Probably not. I don't wanna throw more hazards than I need to. Back. Maybe I should have. And 
I also put these lockers here because I didn't want the player to get caught, particularly on this one, um, because it is kind of a tight space. Um, and if he comes in, he's, the player could get into trouble very easily. There's not a lot of ways out. And that's another reason that I also put that pass through there. All right, so now I'm gonna the mechanic to get through. Let him investigate over there draw him to the other side of the level, and I'm going to book it. Um, oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention, too, is as we come out of that area, sorry, I know I said I was going to book it, um, but as we come out of this area, we can also see that that um, gear is clearly visible, too. Um, so we, if we look hard enough, we can see it right in the corner of our eye, and the area is now lit up by that light box as well to kind of demonstrate... Um, the area opening up and that there's more back there than you first perceive um and now i'm gonna pick up this bottle before i hit the checkpoint just to show that if we have it and lose that we still have it so I'm throw it oh and that's another thing too is that the hazards will um save their state so that hazard that i just threw won't appear later because it wasn't there before the checkpoint was reached But any that they've already thrown before they hit the checkpoint are absolutely there. Um, and all of that checkpoint functionality um, was I was assisted with um, by Lane uh, because he did a lot of the work for the checkpoints um, and he helped me walk through getting the models and the hazards uh, connected up to that and going. Um, so big thank you and shout out to him for helping me get that going. So we're going to let him go away. And we do see that there's another generator part in here. We've gotten back to the uh, entry room and we've seen the interaction with the generator. So now we know we have to collect these. And maybe if the player saw that in the beginning, um, they could go back and get it. But at this point, they can come back and open this door again. And now they have free traversal of the level. Um, the door won't do that again because now the entirety of the map has been opened up to both the AI and the player. And what I kind of did here with this gear is I intended it to be a little bit easier to get back because it's the first one you run into. And if you don't take it out of that room, it's actually a pretty good walk. <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> and that's the thing about the level. Is, uh, AI is constantly looping, so you never know like when you're going to run into him, and he can really get the jump on you. And now i got to figure out a way to get back to that gear that I just left without him being a bother. So I'm going to try to draw him over. Hopefully I don't have to go through there again. And I'm going to walk this generator piece over to the generator. All right, and now we've got one more to get, which is that one in the back. now it's going that way so i'm gonna oh why is there gonna be one right in the door why did i do that oh i stepped on it i'm getting in the locker all right uh so i'm gonna get this last generator piece um and that's kind of the thing that i'm demonstrating is like i stepped on the hazard so now he's coming over and i gotta get in the locker and i knew that he was coming so you know it gives you that jump of oh man now i gotta get out of here but it also can be interesting because since the level's kind of spread out at this point if you need him out of there you can step on a hazard that you've already placed and run um so now we have that complete and hello oh, i'm gonna activate that I'm get this locker to see right there and then i'm gonna book it for the exit We see that when we walk through that door, this uh, volume triggers and opens up the other door, similarly to the other part of the level, and we reach our windscreen and condition. But uh, 
that's basically it for my mechanic and level. I uh, really hope you enjoyed the video. There is a little bit more that I would like to do with it. I would have liked to make it so E and Q could increase or decrease the trajectory of the path while aiming so it would increase uh, the speed that the bottle was thrown, but I just kind of ran out of time as we do. Um, but again, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and the mechanic, and I'm going to pass it on to my teammate, Gavin Wood. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gavin Wood, and this is my Sprint 3 or Milestone 1 mechanic. The mechanic I decided to go with is a Darkness Monster, which is a variation of the monster in our game. As you can tell by the name, he can only get you in the dark. So as you spawn in, there's rubble behind you indicating that you can't leave. A dead man on the ground with a stay in the light message above him. Go in here, got some rubble to your right, opening right here, pipes leading you this way. Right here you have the new key puzzle generator. It's a gas generator. If you put this gasoline in here, it will give the lights more power and will not let this flicker event happen right here. So as you can see, it flickers, lights turn off, and a monster spawns and will end the game if you overlap with him. I'm in the safe zone right here, so he cannot get me. So we are all good. Lights back on, put some gasoline in the generator, and you'll see the lights will get brighter. And the flicker event cannot happen for at least 30 seconds. With the lights on and you can tell the lights will get more dim whenever the power is back off and it's more unstable so if you got bright lights you know you're good so i'll go ahead obviously the player would have to do some exploring to find all the puzzle pieces and know where the generator is but for the sake of the demo video demo video i will just run it straight to it right here see there's gasoline right here i'll try to get this back to the generator before the lights come out I do not have enough time. So lights go out, you need to get yourself to a safe zone. Yep, right on time. I had to provide some area for the player. You can also jump in the lockers as he can't get you in there. All right, lights back on. The goal is to provide a player uh, areas of safety. The whole philosophy of the level is just constant refuge and danger. Barely made it in time. Oh, there, there it goes. So now I can put the gas in the generator. And we got power. So this should give me enough time to do. Or I guess I can do the light box. So right here, there's a light box puzzle. Very simple. Hold it down for 10 seconds, and it will, in this level, it will provide you an extra safe zone in this room. So now these lights are safe. You will not they will not be affected by the flicker event and you can sit in here when that event occurs. Let's go right there. I need to pick up the last piece. Oh, probably should head back this way. So you can see these are not flickering. And now the overlaps that are in the safe zone are now taking place right here at these doorways, preventing me from getting attacked. Lights back on, I'm safe to go back out. So now I just need to deliver this to the uh, generator. I can turn it on. Generator is on, and I think the monster just perished walking into that overlap, so I think we're good. And now the level can end before the level ends show you extra rooms that the players would discover if they were to explore and didn't know exactly what to do. So in here there's more gasoline. Right there there's more gasoline and I guess I'll show the loose condition as well. So you can see he runs into me, I die, I respawn and he comes flying at me. It doesn't matter because I have to overlap and I'm in the safe zone. So yeah that's pretty much the level. The main philosophy like I said earlier just uh, refuge and danger. Just have to avoid him by staying in the light. And if you play your cards right, it'll be pretty easy. But if you get caught out with this light, you only have about five seconds to find safety of some sort. And he is very fast. You cannot outsprint him. And there's the level. So I hope you enjoyed. That has been my mechanic. Um, I guess uh, that's it. Have a good day.
Hello everyone, my name is Eric Troy and welcome to the welcome to the flashlight level. The reason why I said flashlight level because this is the because we're gonna be using the flashlight throughout the level, which is exactly attached to the player. So as you can see around here, we're in in a dark and abandoned house where where we are pretty much trapped inside. But we gotta be careful because the uh, the enemy AI. But there is a flashlight as you can see. So we gotta be careful. He careful because the, en the enemy's right here. Oh, we gotta be careful. We get the stars. Okay. I think it might be gone. I'm not sure. Anyway, so in order in order to in order to press the flashlight, in order to have the flashlight activated, you need to press the F key. But we might need to be careful for the flashlight because it will attract the um the enemy. I also gotta be more careful because the shards the shard the shards on the ground. So we're gonna go downstairs. Oh yeah, also another thing, there is a locked door right here. So as you can see right here. There is a, a it says here a key a key needs to be required. So there is a key so there is a key that so the key a key needs to be required just so the um just so you can you can be able to to, to escape. And so we got to be more careful because the enemy is right here. But right now we're gonna collect the battery that's right here. But there's gonna be a puzzle. There are puzzles that's gonna be in this level. So let's look around. There's pretty much, pretty much a it's pretty much a puzzle that's in the backyard, which which we are which where we are right now. And so we're gonna have to collect we're gonna have to uh, collect collect all the gears and even the lever, and of course the battery which we got in our hand since that's collected. So we're gonna dash forward, generate our health. So the, yeah, so the flashlights are pretty much required for dark areas, especially especially. Oh, we see him. So we're gonna hide under here, and hopefully that works. Okay, so we got the gear right here. So and we're gonna we're gonna put down right here. Put down the generator right here. And we need a and we need the other gear that we literally just picked up and they would just put they just sat on the ground. But hopefully the enemy's not here anymore. Well, well not around this area. And we're gonna have to be more careful. So I'm pretty sure I just heard it. Okay, so we got so we got the puzzle right here. Crunch under. And then we're going to then we got the um the second the second gear what's left is the lever hopefully hopefully the enemy is not around this area Okay, so it's dark, so let's turn, let's turn on the flashlight. And we see the last part, which is the lever. Okay, so. 
Oh, the enemy is probably on its way, so we gotta be careful. Okay, so. So it seems to get the last part of the puzzle. And now. And now, and now that now that we open now that we open do, now that we got generator working and we got the door opening, as you can see, we got this uh, we got this some kind of abandoned storage room, but moreover, we found a key. So you're gonna have to, so of course you're gonna have to uh, press the left the right the left mouse button in order to keep in order to uh, interact with the key. So we crouch again and we are quickly. We gotta check and see where exactly is the enemy, but we gotta be. Again, but again, we gotta be careful. Okay, so here's required. We got the, we got the door opening, and so. We're gonna, have to, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to have the um the life puzzle working and now we we officially escaped and yep that's all for my flashlight level so what is on you, you just need to click to complete the puzzle to collect the key open the door open the, open the main door put it with the key which is required and I'll complete the life puzzle to escape Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will pass the video on to Michael. Hello everybody, my name is Michael Baltazar, and today we'll be going over the thing, the mechanic that I built for, so that no one will cry, the game for the capstone project of Team Lunar. So, if we could just start this bad boy up give him a quick second to load in so that no one will cry we go to level select and we go to keypad so with the keypad it's simply just a keypad tool where you see we have a code so a number signed and then from one to two which means it should display hopefully to the, the player that this code it has has different numbers and the numbers should go up based on the bottom number it's assigned to Ooh. so you see this is a six one so that means there's a six, that's the first number of this code. A four, four, which means the fourth number of the code is the number four. Now, if I can It's like bad boys stuck over there.
let's see can I make it out all right five's the second number so we know it's six is the first number five is the second number four is the fourth number so what is number number three oh 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 he sees me he sees me okay like I'm gonna have to make a beeline towards it because he's not gonna let up huh Okay, so this number two is the third number. As we now know, so the code now is six five two four. So if we go right here, right mouse button. So let's see if we. Oh, six, five, two, four. Oh, there we go, and that's that's it. Well, let's restart from the beginning since we now know the correct input let's see if we whoops put in the wrong code now invalid code invalid code oh one more time oh no he sees us and we were captured so as you can see pretty simple pretty reliable keypad tool that we can use and with that all being said uh, I bid you all uh, have a nice day and if you couldn't tell from before uh, the keypad will make an alarm that will attract the enemy if the player gets the code wrong three times in a row. And like I said before, so long everybody and have a very nice day.